that God be the glory. Amen. Amen. Well, let's get right into this tonight. Truly, it is hot. Glory to God. Amen. So we have to pray and say, God, send the wind, send the wind, send the cold air. Amen. And so, um, let's get into this tonight. I have been talking about angels at work and how God has released angels in this season to aid, to assist, to help. And truly, uh, we've seen God do what he said he would do, amen. We'll share a little bit about that a little bit later. But I want to, tonight, deal with some things. Let's go to James, second chapter. So I'm not going to talk so much about angels tonight as much as I want to discuss the fact, you hear me say this all the time as well, it's important that we understand that fact. And I feel my shield here. Go to Psalms. Uh, let's see. There it is. Go to Psalm 62. Psalm 62. Well, well, I told you, boy, I'll get back there in a minute. Go to Psalm 62 tonight. Psalm 62. Truly, my soul waited upon who? God. Now, when you get to that area of soul, it's saying, my reasoning, my decision-making ability, everything I'm learning how to do what? Wait on God or to what? Trust God. We have to get to a place where we're learning to trust God more than we're trusting our desire to acquire or to have. Amen? Truly, my soul waited upon God. From him cometh my what? When you see the word salvation, that is something, everything you need. Everything you need, he has to come out of God. The Bible says, every good and perfect gift coming from above, from the Father of lights, in whom there's no variableness, neither is there any what? Shadow of turning. So in essence, uh, another way of saying is that the blessings of the Lord make rich and add no sorrow. So in essence, if we wait on God to do it, it's done. If we wait on God to do it, it's right. Amen? Hallelujah. Two, he only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. Now, I'm going to give you this one, the other line, because even as we have been dealing with the enemies and adversaries, that's a good verse for you to underline. Lord, I thank you that you're my defense. You're my defense against all adversarial forces, foreign and domestic, spiritual and natural. Amen? And then look what he says behind that. Because he is my rock and my salvation, he is my defense, guess what? I ain't going to be greatly moved. How many you know a lot of times when the enemy is coming against you, he's trying to make you move out of position? You know what I mean? See, sometimes he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Kill and destroy is his ultimate. But a lot of times, if he can't kill or destroy, he's just content stealing from you. Or causing you to be delayed in what you get. Amen? How long will you advance in mischief against a man? He shall be slain, all of you. As a bowing wall shall you be, and as a tottering fence. They only consult to cast him down from his excellency. Anytime the enemy wants to get at you, he's after your excellency. He's after your virtue. He's after your obedience in God. I mean, the Bible says, if you're willing and you can eat what? You're good in the fat of the land. So willingness and obedience go together. They're twins in that respect. So you can't be obedient and not have a will to be because you'll, you'll soon quit. But you can't just be willing and then don't do. It's the same factor. So you have to have the combination. You have to be willing to and then obey whatever the instruction is because the blessing is in the obedience. Is that making sense? They only consult to cast him down from his excellency. They delight in lies. So what is one of the ways the enemy tries to bring you down? Lies. What's his number one attack mode? Tell a lie. Make you doubt, make you distrust or not believe. Amen. They bless with their mouth, but they curse 
in with it. It's, you know, I'm not getting all this tonight. That's witchcraft. Witchcraft will sit in your face and say, oh yeah, oh I just love you at that same time. I'm not saying none of the prayer, I can't stand it. I wish you would just fall down and die. Yes. <laughs> See, so you can't be so sold on somebody in your face singing your praise because flattery doesn't get you anywhere. But see, some people love flattery. You got to get to a place in life where compliment me if you want to, if you don't, it ain't no matter you one way or the other. You see what I'm saying? Just so you can know who you're in. I said all that to you right here. My soul wait thou only upon God. Why? From him is my what? See, it doesn't matter what they say, even what they do, I'm looking for God. I'm waiting on God. My soul has made a decision. I'm going to trust God. Proverbs says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways, what? Acknowledge him so he can do what? Direct your path. A lot of times when he's directing you, he'll direct you around all this foolishness. Or he'll either direct you straight through it. Amen? But you got to have a what? Ear to hear what his spirit is saying. Uh, okay, well, I, let me finish reading this one. He says, when I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches, because thou hast been my help, therefore in the shadow of thy wings I will what? Rejoice. Why is the shadow of the wings important? What did he say when he brought the children of Israel out in Exodus? He brought them out on what kind of wings? Eagle's wings. God said, when I bring you out, you're going to know you out. When I bring you through, you're going to know you through. Because watch this, eagle's wings. Eagles go higher than anybody else. In essence, you're going to know there's an elevation. Amen? You're going to know you are a puppet and no longer in it. Amen? My soul followed hard after thee, that right hand upholdeth me. But those that seek my soul to destroy it shall go into the lower parts of the earth. Those that seek to what? That the word is destroy. I just told you a minute ago, what? Steal, kill, and what? Destroy. What are they searching for? What are they after? They want destruction. They want destruction, but God says, I'm going to live. I'm going to bless. I'm going to increase. I'm going to favor you if you trust me. He says, but your enemies shall go into the lower parts of the earth. They shall fall by the sword. They shall be a portion for foxes. But the king shall rejoice in God. Everyone that sweareth by him shall glory. But the mouth of them that speak lies shall be stopped. So God tells you throughout this particular, um, and depending on what your caption is, you got to have a strong dependence upon God. You got to know that he is who he says he is and that he will do just what he said he would do. Therefore, what? My expectation is from God. My expectation is from God. Because God has already, we've been talking about this, God has already given me promises. God has already given me word that he will not let drop, fail, or fall to the ground. The word of the Lord is so sure, but it's got to be where? In our mouth and in our hearts. But then it can't just be in your mouth and in your heart and not be in the atmosphere. Hmm? It's got to be in your heart, it's got to be in your mouth, but it's got to be in the atmosphere. Why? We've talked about that. So angels can bring it to pass. We showed you so many times, and I'm not going back through all that, that's going to be good take. But on several occasions, it came to pass. It came to pass. All we've been talking about this one is coming to pass. God's going to do it. But guess what? I'm giving you the final piece to all of it tonight. you got to expect this. Because if your faith is not out, if your faith is not extended, if there's nothing for it to latch on to while it's locating you, come on, y'all. God had me praying the other night. I ain't saying nothing to nobody. God just had me praying. Sometimes, you know, and I think I've talked to you all about this sometimes. You have to learn how to pray prophetically. 
praying prophetically is God giving you what to pray for. So part of one of the prayers I was praying for this week, God says he needed it to locate you. God, make them locate them. It's just like a GPS. Let them be located. Let their blessings locate them. Let them be found by the blessing. Hallelujah. And so here's what we're saying is that again, how does it locate? By faith. What are you saying? See, everything God's doing is looking for his word. Everything God is sending you is looking for the word coming from you. Huh? And that's, that's where I belong. Okay, that's who asked me for that. Okay, that's who needs this. But you got to put it out there. So it's got to be in your heart, but it's got to be in your mouth, but it's got to be in the atmosphere. Okay? And your expectation beyond the attack has to still be God's going to do it for me. God's going to open the door for me. God's going to make the way for me. <clears throat> I thought about something earlier today. Elder Brown, you will remember this. Oral Roberts, when he was alive, one of Oral Roberts' favorite mantras was this. God is doing something good today for me. Something good is going to happen to me today. Okay, yeah, you might remember too. All right, something good is going to happen to me today. That was his daily confession. Well, guess what happened? Something good always happened. Amen. Miracles always showed up. Why? Because that's what he put in the atmosphere. That's, that's what led him. Something good. Well, this, this and that going on. Yeah, but something good is going to happen to me. We. Today. Today. I thought about that the other day. Earlier this week, or several things was going on. I thought, okay, man, God, you did this today. What you going to do tomorrow? Huh? When God moved, you know, okay, God, what you going to do next? What's coming next? Why? Because you're in anticipation. And your anticipation has expectation. Huh? Anticipate. Yeah, there's some stuff trying to work against me, but you got it. There's some stuff coming against me, but you got it. I don't even feel like, but you still got Huh? I'm expecting God to move. All right, I'm almost done. Let's go to third job. So we've already talked about this too, that when we deal with the promises of God, and why can't we have such strong expectations? In fact, I need to deal with two scriptures. First Chronicles, second Chronicles 1 and 20, you already know this, all the promises are what? Yeah. Amen. Amen. So you can have great expectation because God has already told you, I want to do it. Right. Now, we go to 1 John 5, and I'm not going down, but 514 says, and this is the confidence we have. If we ask him anything according to his will, he hears us. Well, his will is his what? Word. So God is always listening for the word. The key is how much word you put out there. Huh? You got to put it out there. Your confession has to line up with what you believe. Amen? That's why tonight I'm getting it. We talk about tonight. Faith works. Faith works. But faith without works is dead. Did you catch that? Faith works, but faith without works is dead. And anything dead, you heard the expression, needs to be buried. Well, we ain't dead in God because God's alive. So we have breath, and that breath is so we can speak or decree the thing that God says, watch this, ask me for. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, now watch this, what the scripture says. I already know what you have need of. But ask. Yeah, y'all can catch that with this. God says, I already know you have a need. I already know what you need. But I still want you to do what? Okay, scripture. You have not caused you. You gotta ask. Well, they do 
I'm saying? Close, close hand, close mouth, don't get fed. Yeah. True the fact. You gotta open up. You gotta open your own mouth. Sometimes you gotta not only just open your mouth, you gotta open your mouth and your hand. Come on now. All right, let's go here. Third jump, two. What does this say? Beloved. What? Come on. Okay. Beloved, I wish. I can't make you, but I wish you would. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I ain't going to beg you, but I wish you would. Right, right. Huh? I ain't going to force you, right. but I wish you would. Yeah, right, 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 right. I wish you would just obey right. and get blessed. Yeah. I wish you would just believe what I'm saying and receive what he is. Beloved, I wish above all things that what? Okay, now take thou out and put your name in there. Hmm? Beloved, I wish the Copelands. Beloved, I wish the Scales. Beloved, I wish the Williams. Come on, y'all. You catching me? Because that thou made it personal. Come on, work with me tonight. It's personal. It's, it's a personal development. Now we talking corporately, but yet it's a personal development. Hmm? Because scripture plainly says, all have not the faith. So it's a personal development to believe. <laughs> Did you hear me? You can't even come to God unless God quickens you, but just because you came to God don't mean you believe all there is about God. He says he's a rewarder of them that Ooh, I know I'm messing with you now. So I'm in Hebrews. That's where I'm at. Hebrews. He says this. He's going to give you the faith to believe in God, but if yet he needs you to continue to seek him as God. Now, why can't I get that message with you? There's no reward to complacency. There's no reward to idleness. Scripture says, idle man suffers what? Hunger. And that's what you're going to starve if you stay idle. Okay, let me see it another way. If the farmer has 20 acres and he don't plant nothing, he's going to starve. You got a job and don't go to work. You ain't got no check. So, okay, I catch my point. Catch my point. Faith without Words. If the farmer don't plow and plant, if the worker don't show up, if the believer don't say what he believes, it's dead. I'm trying to get somewhere. Hold on. So, beloved, I wish above all things that you individually may as prosper and be in health. Even as your what? So I'm back at Psalm 62. Truly my soul is waiting on the Lord. I've learned how to allow my soul to prosper by waiting on God. By not just making rash and quick decisions, but saying, Lord, is this what you want for me? Is this part of your plan? Because there's a way that seems to right to a man, but the end of the death, and we've already talked about this in previous men, problem was you didn't check with God. God said, I could have told you that wasn't it, that wasn't the one. But you never asked. Come on, y'all. 
You have not because you had not. God said, I could have told you. But you hadn't been listening to me. You've been doing your own thing. You've been listening to everybody. Mm -hmm. You've been here, there, and a little bit of everywhere trying to hear a word. And God says, I got a whole book full of words. I got a book full of promise. When you going to look at the promises of God and begin to stand there on so I can do for you what I want to do for you, but you yet trusting in them who know not what I say, go to 2 Peter. I'm going to show you this. Go to 2 Peter. 2 Peter 1. And I've shown you this part before, but I'll show it to you again tonight. 2 Peter 1, looking at verse 3. It says, according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto the life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that called us to glory and virtue. Remember I talked a minute, a minute ago about the excellence? The excellence is the virtue. There it is again. Both words, excellence and virtue, same thing. Okay? He says, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye may become what? Of what? Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Now watch this, I'm going to another place right now. That's why the Bible says love not the world. Because God said, I've gave, I gave given you an escape from the world. Because if you get caught up in the world, you're going to get caught up in lust. You're going to get caught up in chasing what I never ordained for you to have. Oh, y'all ain't working with me tonight. See, when God saves us and brings us out of the world, he expects us to leave the world behind. Because the world will always be an enmity against God. The world, the world will never get you closer to God. You know what I'm talking about that? Most people who are really in the world, are they close to God? So what you think will happen to you if you get in the world? Oh, you go, oh, I'm a guy. You super woman. <laughs> you super human. Right? Wrong. That's why he said, come out from among them and be eaten. Watch right. this. If you were that strong, he would have left you in there. Watch right. right. this. If you were that strong, you would stay. If, if, if Israel were as strong as they were, why would they cry to leave Egypt? Right. Huh? Because watch this, in the world, the task always gets harder to maintain. Y'all can catch that with this. Okay, let me say it another way. It costs you too much to keep up. Because hmm? you got so much pulling at you from so many directions, ain't no way in the world. So he said, love not the world, these are the things that in. So look what he says here. He said, I've, I've given you everything you need to escape the corruption that's in the world through lust. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. The three major attacks the enemy is going to bring against you and against your faith, I've given you promises to get you out. Y'all still ain't catch that this. Everything the enemy can offer you, I've offered you more than in the kingdom. Okay, y'all ain't called me yet. Everything the world is giving you at a price, I paid the price and gave it to you in a promise. That's seven hundred fifty thousand all day long. Huh? Did you hear that? Everything the world is going to make you pay to have, God says, I'm giving it to you. Y'all missed it. He said, and what did he say right there? He said, in what? 
Look at it. Whereby I give you great seeding bread from that you may be partaking of the divine nature and have escaped the corruption that is in this world. Oh, he's back up. I'm sorry. He says everything that pertains to what? Life and both sides. Naturally and tell your neighbor. Naturally you blessed. Spiritually you blessed. Oh, that means you don't want for nothing. Hmm? Okay, let me give you an example. Y'all miss it with me tonight. How could Jesus say to the enemy what he said because he knew he was already blessed in another kingdom? So when the enemy is offering you anything, it's stolen. my feet and a 
Started at verse 1, chapter 4, verse 1. Look what it says. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we receive mercy, we do what? We don't faint. But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness. Now look at this next part. Now having the word what? See, it makes a difference how you handle the word. Huh? Now watch this. The world, with the word will profit you, but you can't prostitute the word. Timothy says all scripture is given in by inspiration of God and is profitable. You missed that. The word will profit you, but it can't be prostituted. I never rest on that one. I never get by 12 or 2. They'll think about that tonight. <laughs> but by, watch this, nor having the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation. Did you see that? If you handle it, it deceitfully, there won't be a manifestation. Now, God began to deal with me something else. We'll get in it too, probably in the next month or so. But there's a difference, there's, a, there's manifestation and demonstration. There's a demonstration for a manifestation, and there's a manifestation that's for a demonstration. Can't get it right now, I gotta hold it for a minute. Did you see that though? But he says right here, watch how you handle the word, because there's gonna be something's coming. But you want, to, you want it to come correctly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you have to tell folks, well, you can come to me all you want, but you better come correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> you know, else I did too. <laughs> Listen, have you had anybody ever mishandle you? Or one of the first things, oh, I'm going to see it, son. So, <laughs> careful, son, careful. The first thing you say when somebody doesn't help is, who you blank think you talk to? <laughs> Better put some respect. <laughs> Y'all ain't going to starve me tonight. I'm not going there. 
But sometimes, but, but you know, sometimes you got to straighten folks. Sometimes you got to straighten demons and devils up. You might think I don't know who I am, but keep messing with me. And you can holler about, I thought you were saved all you want. I'm going to be saved because I'm going to repent before I leave you. But right here, right alone about now. God help me. Y'all pray for me. Pray for your pastor. Please pray for your pastor. Amen. So look what he said. But by manifestation of the truth, committing ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Now let me drop on down. I gotta get through with this. Oh Lord, I almost can't get through with this. Okay, let me say it. Let me do it like this. He says, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are what? In whom the God of this age, God of this world, what has he done? Blind. See, why God said come out of the world? Because that devil want to blind you. That devil want to keep you blind to the promises. He want to keep you blind to what belongs to you. He don't want you to get the gospel because the gospel is the revelation of what's yours. Is it making sense? Now watch this here. He is, y'all, it's all in the scripture. In whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe. He's looking for somebody that don't trust God. That don't believe God can do what he can do. Look what he says here. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants, for Jesus' sake. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness have shined in the heart, there it is again, to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus. So the more you see Jesus, the more you're going to see what's yours. Right. <clears throat> the more you get in the gospel, the more you get in the word, and you get illuminated, and you get in light, in light you're going to know what's yours. Watch this here. Now here, I got to go. Seven. But we have this treasure. Where? That the, the, the word is again, excellency. Of the power may be of God and not of us. God, and that's the watch this, y'all. Let me help God said, can't you just let me work in you? Can't you just let me do this for you? Can't you let me come through you to make it happen? Come on, y'all. Look what he said. He said, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, cast down, but not destroyed, always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus, that here, might be what? So let me tell you what the manifest is. Show up. Now watch this here. God said, you show up, I'll show up. You come to the front, I'll be right there to meet you. You get in position and I'll be there. You get in place and I'll be there. You say what I said and I'll make it come to pass. Right. Jesus. Look what he goes on to say. So he said that the life of, of, of Jesus also might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then death working with us, but life is working what? He said, now watch this here. You don't realize I'm dying to get this to you. But what I'm giving to you will cause you to fail. Huh? Watch this here. He says, we having the same spirit of faith. According as it is written, I believe and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore we speak. Faith works, but faith without works, you got to say something. To, for them angels to move, you got to say something. To become the magnet that needs to attract the blessing, you got to say something. You're going to either draw it to you or propel it from you. Because death and life is in the power of the tongue. So you got to learn how to work your faith. Amen? One more verse, I'm out. Second Chronicles. Twenty twenty. 
come back to where I'm going. Seven o'clock, it's 2020. Man, my original study, I had planned to work, to work through all of this in Seven o'clock, but as you can tell, I went a whole nother route. So I ain't gonna read all this stuff. Because it's, 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 Seven Chronicles 2020 is in depth. It shows you how God will defeat what's coming against you. So in your leisure, when you get back home, read it all. Amen? But I do want to pick it up in 10. Try to help you a little bit. Look what it says. And now, behold, the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, whom thou wouldest not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and destroyed them not. Behold, I say, how they reward us to come to cast us out of thy possessions. Spirits want what you got. Y'all didn't catch me. I, I wish I had time to really get into this tonight. Now, you know what I mean? God told you to cast them out, but they were that trying to cast you out. You've been ordained to be there, called to. It's yours. God made it possible for you. And the devil said, well, you cast me out. I guess I'll get you up out of here. Pay attention now. See, I, and y'all hear me say this all the time. I keep trying to tell everybody. Everybody don't know you like that. If you pay attention to people's conversation, you can know where their heart is when it comes to you. Right. Yeah. Then be fooled now. That's my friend. I don't care. <laughs> Your friend a demon. Yeah. <laughs> Behold, I say they reward us to come cast us out of thy possession, which thou hast given us to what? God, this mine, you won't be the head. But these demons, oh, our God, wilt thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great coming that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do. But our eyes, at least they have enough sense to look to Jesus. But did you hear what they say? We don't know what to do. We in a fight, and we don't know what to do. Our stuff is up for grab, and we don't know what to do. Now, I'm going to make this point, because I need to hit real hard right here. How you don't know what to do when you're in church every week? When you hear it, you see it. That can't be your excuse in the 21st century. Amen. We don't know what to do. And all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. Then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jehah, the son of Matthew, a Levite of the sons of Anne, came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. One person was in tune. To hear God. Because don't nobody know what to do. But watch this. And he said, Hearken ye all Judah and ye heavens of Jerusalem, and thou King Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid, nor dismayed by reason of the great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God. You can't look at the battle and win. You got to look at God. You can't look at the size of what's coming against you or even literally who it is coming against you. You got to look to Jesus. Because what? I need a word from the Lord. Huh? If, if, if David had a look at Goliath's side, Goliath never would have failed. If he had listened to Goliath taunting, he never would have made a move. Is that making sense? Okay, just one. But that is that right. 
Look what he said. Here's the instruction. Tomorrow go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Zion, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeriel. You shall not need to fight in this battle, but set yourselves. Stand ye still and see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord... So he not only gave them instruction, he said, I know where they at. I know they next move. So watch this. True to fact, you don't know, but I do. So I'm going I'm to give you an attaboy because you had enough sense to come talk to me about it. Now, I got, my spirit was released on the one who was closest. Oh, Jesus, help me. My spirit was released on him that had it near to him. Okay, you follow me there. He says, 18, And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord. Look what they're doing, Michael. Don't ever go to battle without worship. Don't jump no enemy until you don't worship. It's all in here, y'all. You better put it out. And the Levites of the children of the Korah and the children of the Korah stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. You see that? Now, now Michael, for the sake, I'm going to help you with something right quick. It ain't praise and worship. It's worship and praise. 750,000 plus. All the better people in the history is that Jackie Plus. Listen, worship will give you a reason to praise. Worship will give you a reason to praise. All right, y'all follow that? Okay, now keep it moving. And they rose early in the morning, went forth to wilderness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Worshiping the Lord. And they go out and they stood up to praise. 20. And they rose up early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tor. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God, so you can at least be established. Right. To believe God will establish you. He says, but watch this. Believe his prophets, and you're going to prosper. Let me mess with you right there. Just because you come to church don't mean nothing. If you ain't heard what was said. People come to church and miss the instruction. People come to church, worship and pray, and leave out and forget what the instruction was. Many times people are prophesied to and prophesied on, and they don't remember what was said. It's more important to hear what was said. I don't care if you did fall out. You ought to get up and say, now what did he say? Huh? Because something had to be spoken. Something had to be decreed and declared. But if you don't know what it was, you might be established, but you in limbo when it comes to prospects. So faith works, but faith without works is dead. 